boys and girls, now that you have a map to your personal narrative helping you identify what your paragraph should be about, it is time to focus on that introduction paragraph. So today we are learning to compose a strong introduction for a personal narrative. Strong introductions get your reader interested in your writing. They hook your reader and make them want to finish reading your story. Let's take a look at some strong introduction types. Dialogue. Starting the story in the middle of a character's conversation. This helps the reader join in the story. Vivid descriptions. Lots of interesting details describing the setting, character, or the scene. Asking a question. Posing a question to the reader that will make them want to read further. Interesting fact. A surprising or interesting fact that will make the reader want to read on to learn more. Sound effect. Can be used like dialogue. The sound effect makes the reader curious to see what's happening in the story. Now what about some weak introductions? Some things you do not want to do to start your, your personal narrative with. Once upon a time, one day, one time, I'm going to tell you about, or just too much dialogue. These are some weak introduction types and things you want to stay away from when starting your personal narrative story. Let's see if we can sort some strong introduction types from some weak introduction types. Okay, here is an introduction. Let me tell you about the day I went to the museum. Strong or weak, you decide. Definitely weak. We could make that a little more stronger by maybe giving an interesting fact about something in the museum. The plane slowly rolled up to the gate before coming to a sharp stop. Strong or weak intro type? You tell me. I agree. This is strong. This is giving some vivid details. One day, I saw my friend at the museum. What do you think? Strong or weak intro? I definitely would say weak. Starting off with one day isn't very exciting. Do you want to learn about Arizona? Would you say that is a strong or a weak intro type? So while this is a question, and questions normally are strong intro types, I'm going to say that this is a weak intro type. The reason why I say that is because it's not a very thought-provoking question. You just answer it really with a yes or no, I'd like to learn about it. But you don't know exactly what you're going to learn about with regards to Arizona. It's just not as detailed as I would like it to be. Let's take a look at our next example. Have you ever wondered how far away Arizona is? Would you say that this is a strong or a weak intro type? I would say that this one is a strong intro type. This question is more specific than the last one. It focuses on how far away Arizona is as opposed to just Arizona as a whole, which is a giant state. Let's take a look at our next example. I'm going to tell you about Arizona. Would you say this is strong or weak? I would say weak. I'm falling asleep over here. I'm going to tell you about... Just not catchy. Not hooking me. 
Let's try the next example. Here I come, I yelled to my crying brother. Would you say strong or weak? I agree. Starting off with dialogue is a strong introduction type. I'm really wondering where this character is going. I'm joining right in on the conversation and the action. Vroom! We heard the car speed up the street. Strong or weak? Starting with onomatopoeia or sound is a great way to get the reader's attention. This is definitely strong. One time I went to the zoo and saw flamingos. I agree. This is kind of weak. Starting with one time is boring. Maybe instead we can start off with what the flamingos look like. A vivid description would be better here. Arizona is more than 2,000 miles away from North Carolina. Let's see, is this strong or weak? This interesting fact is really strong, and I'm now curious as to why the author is sharing this interesting fact. So that's a strong intro type. The snow was falling and the sky was dark gray. Would you say this is strong or weak? Definitely strong. I can easily visualize this scene. I feel like I'm there with the author. And finally, once upon a time, I flew on a plane. I'm going to have to say weak as well. Even though most fairy tales start with once upon a time, it's not really attention grabbing. It's been done a million times before, and I'm falling asleep over here. Let's take a look at the introduction I had written on my outline. This is directly from my outline. Let me go ahead and read. I'm having such a fun day with close family, friends, enjoying venison, pasta salad, and great conversation. It begins to drizzle, so I hop in the car with Alicia and Wendy to make our way back to the house. When we arrive at the house, the rain stops, and the sky looks gorgeous. This is a nice outline of an intro, but it's just not as strong or as catchy as I would like it. I think I can write a better introduction with some vivid descriptions. Lots of interesting details describing the setting, character, or scene. So let's take a look at my new and improved introduction. I am soaking up the sunshine that is peeking through the clouds on this humid August day as I am surrounded by the laughter and chatter of my loved ones. Can anyone else visualize this day? Does anyone feel like they're there with me, feeling the humidity in the sky, hearing the laughter and chatter around? Everywhere I look, I see happiness exuding. As I look to my right, Alicia is conversing with Benny's wife and Wendy about life. To my left, Joe is serving me more scrumptious venison, even though I am saying, no more, I am full. Far in the distance, Trevor is winning a game of Can Jam. Boys and girls, I am using vivid descriptions to describe everything around me, to my left, to my right, and far out into the distance. Remember that your introduction should be a whole paragraph, so don't be afraid to add descriptive language such as scrumptious or dialogue such as no more, I am full. Let me keep reading my intro paragraph. I think to myself, what a perfect summer day. Soon, the humidity causes a sprinkle of rain, so I hop in the car with Alicia and Wendy to make our way back to the house on the lake while the guys decide to walk back in the rain. This is a strong introduction. Boys and girls, 
boys and girls. Today, you will refer back to your introduction that you typed out on your outline slides. You will make it stronger by either adding vivid descriptions, adding dialogue, asking a question, including an interesting fact, or even starting with some onomatopoeia sound effects. Make sure to stay away from those weak introductions. And don't forget, this should be a full paragraph, multiple sentences long. So if you are working in person with paper, you will go ahead and rewrite your new and improved introduction on this page of your writing packet. Then you will have a classmate or maybe a sibling at home or a parent or a guardian take a look at your new improved introduction. If you are the peer who is reviewing, you'll state something that you really liked about your partner's introduction. You'll identify the type of introduction that they used and give them one idea to make it better or make it stronger. This is if you were working on the paper copy. Boys and girls, if you are working virtually on the computer, you will go ahead and use the introduction from your outline sheet as your basis and type it here in this pink box. And you can even highlight the strong introduction type you chose. Once it's all done and it is a strong introduction paragraph, you can copy and paste it back onto your outline slides. Replace that old one because this one is new and improved. I can't wait to be hooked by your introductions, boys and girls.